Czech Republic now, a few days later. The phrase obscene extreme is a hollowed one, echoed intercontinentally. You catch fragments of it on message boards, claims of it standing as the ultimate metal fest. But when you live in America, the chance you'll actually meet someone that's lived through its madness is slim. When you do, they are almost always in a band that actually graced its stage, and when asked, their eyes spark up with the potency of a towering lighthouse. Communication is immediately lost. Everything spills out in an awestruck babble rendered incoherent by fantastic recollection. Well, what was it like? You ask plainly. And the response is always a mess of, Dude, you don't even fucking know, bro. It's like fucking, dude, fucking, just like, holy fucking shit, brah. Really, brah, fucking, holy fucking... All I knew was that some badass metal fest materialized once a year in Central Europe. It was vague to me, since I'd no means to attend it. Why put yourself in a sulking situation? That's like a five-year-old getting hyped on Santa's North Pole workshop, having a seizure over the possibility of all those imaginary toy stockades. It's like, just stick with your own fucking Christmas tree, alright, kiddo? Don't get too spazzed up about sugary providence. When I elaborated to interviewees during this trip, that not only was I going to Obscene Extreme, but I had the guest list and backstage media pass for all three days, plus plenty of drink tickets. People acted as if I'd won the lottery. Wanting to keep the lineup secret until I arrived, I didn't even bother to look at the flyer. I really didn't want to know. Just let it happen. Moments before we pulled into the band parking lot, I finally let the Repulsioni guys fill me in. And well, first things first, because it really is true. Obscene Extreme is the greatest extreme metal fest in the world. Nothing touches it. Sure, I've never made it to the Maryland Dust Fest in the USA, or Vakken in Germany, or Tuska in Finland, so my response may be slightly skewed, but I doubt it. Prior to Obscene Extreme attendance, I'd pegged the LA Murder Fest 2007 or Milwaukee Metal Fest 2004 as my top tier metal fest experiences ever. But Obscene Extreme? It just dismembers them all. It's like comparing the Adam West Batman to Christopher Nolan's Immaculate Conception. There can be no explanation of a scene extreme in conventional terms. What I think of when examining these past three days is an epic cartoon of everyone in attendance stage diving, moshing, freaking out with a mushroom cloud exploding from the stage itself as if the painting were a mix between Where's Waldo and the album art of Terrorizer's World Downfall, Agorific Nosebleeds of Boar Apocalypse Now, or Napalm Death Scum. The festival takes place in Trutnov, a rural suburb of Prague, at the Festung Battlefield. It is not the site of some legendary World War II skirmish, as I'd assumed, but fairgrounds dubbed Battlefield because to survive Obscene Extreme is to survive a ridiculous war composed of thousands of cannonballs staged dive relentlessly. All in ridiculous costumes, or plainly naked. How many in banana costumes and crash helmets? How many bloodied and torn, smiling with missing teeth? They just keep going. Even the kid I helped up that landed on his head, who actually tore his ear half off in the process. He jumped right back in with it, half dangling from his skull. Obscene Extreme begins on Wednesday, Freak Day, when the weirdos of European punk and metal begin to pop up their tents for the ragort of grindcore. To establish encampment and share some drinks, get bizarre, freak out on mushrooms, run around naked and get redonkulous. This sets the tone for a celebratory, life-filled journey in opposition to all the shitty downers in metal culture. You will not find tough guy, you looking at my girl, gibberish. No pretentious spandex. No unfriendly Johnny evil bullshit. No Metallica hardcore mobs of jock with crew cuts seeking fisticuffs. Thursday it officially begins. It does not stop until 3 a.m. Sunday morning. Day after day, from 10 a.m. until 3 a.m. the following morning, you are assailed by non-stop grindcore, death metal, and the occasional noise band or freak show act. All bands play on the same stage for 20 to 45 minutes, and everyone uses the exact same backline and just plug their instruments right in. Only 10 minutes separates the band performances, one after another in rapid-fire procession. And in between, the loudspeakers jam either Polka or the Pulp Fiction soundtrack. Since the fest is open air, you will find people passed out on the lawn at any given hour. Drink, mosh, stage dive, pass out, return to action. Thousands doing this circular pattern, like insane lemmings begging for blast beats. The campground is fairly massive, flanked by an every edge of by merch booths, campers' tents, bonfire powwows, and vegan food carts. It's crusty as Tijuana dumpster, as if the most illuminated of Planet Koopy were gathered and shit out in a random check field. But down to business, the real meat and potatoes. I'd be sitting through brutal truth, entombed, impaled, squash bowels, recruiter grind, 
the Verrugers, Brujeria, Putrid Pile, Benediction, Flesh Rot, Lock Up, The Rotted, Drop Dead, Mincing Fury, Rotten Sound, Entrails, and Skit System, plus dozens of bands I've never even heard of and will never ever get a chance to see live in the United States. My eardrums got an erection just pondering it. To try and write a show review in conventional terms is useless. You can only pull from your experience the peak, peak flashes. I had attempted to interview a ton of bands, but all you can really drag out of such an event are tiny pre-conjured snippets, like a press junket on a massive scale. Ten minutes to talk to a band before the next one starts, and both the interview and the reporter have their attention immediately flagged to the stage. I must have recorded 15 useless interviews lasting six minutes apiece. Like Shine, for example. I can't even make out what they said. But what I can say about them, however, is not only are they probably the greatest grindcore band ever to come out of France, but they are easily one of the most savage grind bands I've ever seen perform live. What I wish to offer is a succinct description of the peaks flying through my recollections, like stealth bombers. The obscene extreme rains upon the psyche like anvils. One after another the peaks come, raging like PCP-laden wolverines. Of the 69 bands that played, all were stellar in their own unique fashion. The fest began for me on Thursday around 5 p.m. Once Repulsione and I were situated, I parted ways and marched straight through the crowd to backstage, just to make sure I wasn't tripping. One second you're helplessly homeless in Berlin, the next you are loaded with beer tickets and surrounded by Danny Lilker, Shane Embury, Christo Di Pisto, and L.J. Petrov. All of them are electric because Obscene Extreme is for the Grindcore Mafia what Bohemian Grove is to the Illuminati. The first band I saw was Feastum, who played with us in Prague last night. They were just as killer in arena sound as they were in primitive bar PA. Next was Napalmed, a screeching noise performance of homemade synthesizers and amplified devices while the members wore lab coats. Pandemia followed harvesting the pit with death metal fury. Squash Bowels stomped out to the ever-enlarging crowd, slaying with a pulverization historically reserved for a 1920s Texan slaughterhouse. Gride, who I'd never even heard of before, destroyed the crowd with an all-out grindpunk assault. The mighty Entombed played next, who in a strange way felt like hard rock due to the hours-long barrage of grind I'd just endured. That mirage slowly dissipated, and here I was again with the nastily tuned machine that was chiefly responsible for the sound which is described worldwide as Swedish death metal. Magruder grind followed, upping the ante after midnight, when night had coated the sweating mess of half-naked, beer-soaked bodies of crust-annihilated warriors. The drunks continued to stagger about, slamming into each other, stage-diving non-stop in a huge cauldron of dirt that was the front row, everyone filthy and bloody, joyous and free. Benediction thundered on, the old school tore it up, and then came the Hell Show, an S&M circus freak spectacle of women hanging on hooks through their backs flesh and fire breathers galore. I soon made my way to the hill and passed out with all the other victims of Battlefield Trutnov, who now surrounded me like the corpses of Gettysburg. Day 2. Wake up on the hill, say hello to Repulsioni crowd and all the folks I've graciously met, make it to the stage around 11.30 for three grind culprits in a row, dislike, nominal abuse, and porno infantile, all followed by the death metal juggernaut Razor Rape. Enthrallment, this slicer of a death metal beast from Bulgaria, had that Brazilian death influence screaming between the lines. Lautstrumer, a sort of rocking hodgepodge of darkness, came next, which showed us some of the old drill killer guys in new action. UK death metalers flesh rot disappointed no one, and were soon followed by the thrashy D-beat grind punk hybrid DIS from Southern California. It began growing dark again. The encampment's numbers were about several thousand by now, making it a veritable Disneyland of the grindcore elite. For the first time, I had found others that actually danced like me gyrating around frantically like they were being electrocuted by the blast wailing like morse, morse code. We were lost protons that had discovered our nucleus. We regenerated from the grind apocalypse, the way fauna grows to the light of the sun. Rectal Schmegma made a bold attack and entrails zoomed past like an LA drive-by. Extreme Smoke 57 pulled the noise core card, last days of humanity lived up to their name, and Putrid Pile lopped an avalanche of just that upon us. Everything changed dynamics once the Verrugers took over. It was punk supremacy hour and angry animalistic and anarcho as ever. Skit system appropriately followed and rotten sound brought us back to the grind barrage. The big assault that everyone was waiting for now loomed on the horizon. Brujeria. Word had really... Words don't really do justice to how fantastic these guys were. Shame on any who consider them a joke band. At the end of their set, they covered the Macarena by Los Del Rio. It was their classic in itself 
but what shoots it to the moon was the fact that half the pit, like literally 70 people, actually climbed on stage, slam danced, or otherwise pogoed to this notoriously catchy 90s dance anthem. Pajadio were laughing so hard they could barely play their instruments. Following an almost impossible to top performance was Impaled, the finest carcass clone in the business, who firmly held their own despite so many still massively dazed from the tribute to Los Del Rio. Gronobard came next, who I'd never even heard of until this very moment and soon found out to be the French answer to Norway's Turbo Negro, not by musical standards of course, but from their unrelenting homoeroticism, radical queer grindcore from a French band whose name translates to Groin Bard, you know, minstrels of the cock. Twenty people in the band, running around the stage in a freakish display of gender pirate bravery. The singer came out with a devil's mask and pink fairy wings, declaring, Fuck you, we are from France! Michael Alec would have been proud. No-nonsense early 90s pioneer of Swedish death metal internment followed, clearing the slate. Moments before 2 a.m., the crowd began thinning out from most people, assuming that we were heading into the all the big bands shot their wad early. Now we have to sit through the misfits lingering at the shit time slots because all the other bands deemed bigger or more important wanted a drink segment. That's when Shine came on, immediately freezing the lessening crowd in their tracks. The people boomeranged and with huge applause witnessed one of the best performances of the entire day. The carryover worked perfect repulsione, who quickly reblasted their two base power violence attack. The crowd roared, giving their full approval. Gore and Carnage followed. Halfway through their opening number, I was grabbed by lone hands from the crowd. It's dark, it's vague, but I knew that insane grin. Ah, good old Matt Roziki, the Chicago escapee that had left London some time ago and was freshly primed from a grueling bike ride across the width of France. Je au cassé. Day three and thirty minutes before the opening band. Obscene Extreme promoter Kirby and I relax under an empty field tent, drinking coffee and anticipating the day. The day flies blissfully. The afternoon gentleman, brutally deceased, comatose, power cup, hemophagus, unkind, death toll 80k, collision, assessor, wrath cobra, onanizer, mezzerine, visions of war, zubroska, instinct of survival, psycho, inhumate. It's so peacefully turbulent, this hybrid collection of the alienated. Everything materialized perfectly once Isakaram hit the stage with the blood and leather and spastic facial features of the vocalist. This is a surprising example of a band being okay on record but being an unstoppable tank live. The rotted ooze, their Brit gore grind next, followed by a super obscure gore grind act dubbed Dibistural, which delivered a volatile knockout. Things hit a high note once Lockup hit the stage. Let's face it, you can only have heard so many bands. This was my first encounter with them, and they sledgehammered my face to a pulp of nothingness. Brutal Truth finished the job, playing a darker, sludgier, more experimental set. Once Drop Dead begins, I am backstage. Drop Dead, the straight-edge, fast-core legends from Boston, are the big one, which people have waited for all night. This was their first ever OE. As the vocalist looked into the crowd, his expression reflected that he's never quite seen anything like this. The vocalist ranted some dogmatic, animal liberation, go vegan type stuff that was a little over the top and then they tore right into it. I was standing next to the guys from Brutal Truth, next to Lockup, next to Brujeria, and all of us were like little kids in total awe of this band. Drop Dead flawlessly delivered one of the most solid punk performances I'd ever seen. The aftermath of every song was like a Wrestlemania Coliseum chanting holy shit, holy shit in response to some acrobatic devastation. Les Scrawl performed the avant saxophone noise grind set before I came back to reality in one final push of go crazy in the dirt cauldron and slam into people like a 16 year old asshole since we're all gonna die anyway and so let's have some fun and bleed a little. On comes melancholy pessimism with their goofy we mainly speak check this is why our band name sounds totally awkward stigma. Well this band I expected nothing of fucking rock my world earning them a place in my top 20 personally witnessed death metal performances ever. The vibe was indescribable. Everyone was to the primitive and nothing existed in our world or the band's world except their performance in our mad cauldron of lunatic slam dancing. As Grunt took the stage with their S&M grind aesthetic and rubber suits and whatever bizarre sex rituals they were intent on performing, I could no longer regain the balance of gravity for alcohol had taken its toll. The bodies were laid out like the dead of a war, the camp bonfires were smoking craters of spent ammunition, the rain began to pour heavily, crust punks everywhere with arms outstretched like the sewer escape of the Shawshank Redemption. I crept into the empty kinder grinder child teepee and I hijacked it, laying my bruised and mosh mangled carcass atop a wood 
pellet magically drifting off to last night's Reservoir Dogs like glimpse of four crust buddies wandering off with arms around each other's shoulders in eternal friendship. The one in the middle cloaked in a full body cow suit, grimy utter dangling from below. <laughs>